Hey guys, what's up? Justin back for another video. This one's a little bit different. Uh, today I'm at the TriStar Productions Houston Card Show. I think some people call this the Houston National. I don't know enough about card shows to really talk about it, but maybe I'll look some more up or learn some more stuff while I'm in here. Um, I've only been to two card shows before, and my experience is basically just those two local smaller card shows. I guess one was decent size, and one was pretty small. And uh, I wasn't really sure if I was going to come today, honestly. But... I really enjoy the card collecting hobby, so I really need to figure out how these card shows work and, um, you know, get more experience with them. So, I'm here. Um, I did decide to go ahead and set a goal today, and I brought a good portion of the February $300 plus a little bit of leftover from January budget with me in cash. So today, I'm going to try and spend $200 on single cards, um, broken up into a few different things, but we'll see how it goes. I might just find some stuff that changes that, but... My goal for the $200 is to buy one big card, being $100 or more, um, three, two to three medium cards, which would be like in the $20 to $30 to, I don't know, to some, somewhere less than $100, but uh, higher than $20. Um, and then um, just a few small cards, like in the $5 to $20 range, and um, spend the rest on uh, bargain, bargain boxes or dollar bins. But... Um, I feel like this would be just a fun way to spend my day. I had to come today on Saturday because tomorrow there's a lot of games I want to watch. <laughs> uh, Purdue has a really big game, a basketball game. So um, I won't be able to make it tomorrow. So unfortunately, I'm here early on Saturday, and I don't know if that's the best time to be at a card show. They were open yesterday afternoon, though. So hopefully it kind of softened everybody up and um, got them ready to make some deals and stuff like that. But uh, the doors opened at 10, and I'm here at like 11. So I'm here really early. There's not a ton of cars in the parking lot, to be honest. So I'm not really sure how this is going to go. My initial thoughts is I'll just do a couple laps, see what I can find, try and make some lists of some things I'm interested in, and then go back and see if we can't work out some deals for those cards. So, um, yeah, I got uh, I got the cash with me. I'm ready to go. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to be filming like the interactions. I, I don't really do that kind of thing. Um, at least not yet. I'm not really comfortable doing that. I might find, I might get some like still pictures and post them or maybe some short videos kind of talking to myself with, uh, with some display cases, but uh, I'm not going to be filming any like negotiation or anything like that. Uh, not just yet, but anyways, all right, I'm going to head in and uh, spend a few hours here and hopefully have some fun and find some cool cards. So I'll catch you guys later. So a uh, quick update. I actually was on the wrong side of the building. There's a ton of cars here. So, um, this should be pretty fun, but <laughs> I'm going to head in now. <laughs> hours later so um i've already spent most of the money i spent 118 dollars of the 200 dollars budget so i'm going to show you what i've got and then i'm going to go back in and try and spend the rest of the 82 i did kind of put myself in a problem with my goal but uh, let's take a look and see what i got so the first lot that i bought um was from this guy who just had these boxes with no prices um and i was looking for a lot of the rookies that i collect so we got a riley green sapphire rookie a tristan casas spotlight rookie a Chris Morrell Tier 1 Game Used Memorabilia Patch, uh, number to 400. We got the Spencer Steer Gold Refractor. This is number to 75. Um, there you can see it kind of. Well, it's upside down, but there we go. Um, we got see a more Bowman Sapphire Rookie Nolan Gorman. A Tristan Casas uh, Rookie of the Year Favorites. Another Riley Green Bowman Chrome. Gabriel Moreno Sapphire. Michael Harris Sapphire. Um, and check this out. I, I picked up this Ronald Acuna Jr. Chrome MVP buyback. I think the MVP buyback is still going on until the end of February. Um, and I found this in his box. And actually, that's not one from that lot. But anyways, I picked up all of those cards for, I kid you not, $15. Including this buyback card. Which I'm going to take it right back in and see if somebody will take it for 20 bucks. And this Spencer Steer is last sold for 20 um, so I think I need to go back and <laughs> look through that guy's boxes again. Um, let me get these situated. Okay, and then the next uh, lot that I bought was from a dollar box of basketball. We got an OG Anobi rookie, a Pascal Siakam, a Drew Holiday. I thought this was a rookie. I guess it's not. Oh, well. 
Um, Don, uh, DeMontis Sabonis rookie. Here's a Michael Jordan card. I'm not really sure what, what that is, but I just picked it up because it was the only Jordan there. An Obi Toppin rookie. A Trey Young Express Lane. A Pascal, another Pascal Siakam, not a rookie. Um, and then I saw this um, Tony Parker. Um, picked that up. It's like a clear see-through card. And then a LeBron James card as well. Um, I picked up all 10 of those cards for seven bucks. Um, not the best deal, but um, I thought it was decent. Out of a quarter box, I got Alonzo Ball, rookie. Um, Carson Edwards, rookie. Carson Edwards was a Purdue player. He was great at Purdue. Didn't quite make it in the league. I think he's in Europe now. But um, I figured I'd just pick those up because he was a Purdue player. And then uh, Luca Garza, rookie, too. I don't know what the deal is with him. I think he's also playing overseas, but... Um, he was a tough matchup for my Boilermakers when he was playing for um, Iowa. And then um, I got one more lot, which was the biggest lot that I bought. Um, so it had these three Halliburton rookie cards from draft picks when he was playing for Iowa State. Um, well, I guess also the Crusade. but And then um, a Cam Whitmore a rookie as well. Pick this up. I'm not sure what this is called. And then I picked up some bigger cards, too, from the same guy. So I got a Will Benson auto when he was in his Cleveland jersey, unfortunately, but that's okay. I picked up a Bryce Terang auto, numbered to 99. And then two big ones. I picked up a Brooks Robinson chrome black um, auto, RIP Brooks Robinson, and a Ozzie Smith auto, numbered to 99. And I paid $95 for that lot. Now, I honestly don't know if that was like a super good deal. I think it was a pretty good deal. Um, sticker price was like... 112 i think but we all know how sticker prices are guy offered me um the whole thing for um 100 and we i not not a very good negotiator got him down to 95 i think 95 is probably about what it's worth um sold so anyways i've got 82 dollars left plus the mvp buyback so i'm gonna go back in and now i've got to find one big card to meet the goal so i will check back in when i complete that Okay, so um, I came back into the show with $82 and a Ronald Acuna MVP buyback card uh, that I was going to try and find my one big card for. And I found this card, this is at $125, but uh, I told the guy I was interested in it, and um, he said, hey, I have to be honest with you, there's these scratches up here, they're on the card. And I said, okay, because um, I, I thought, like, oh, maybe I could grade it or whatever, but uh, obviously I can't. But Anyways, he said, well, some guy, um, I offered some guy $60 for it because of the damage. So anyways, I bought this card for $40 plus the Ronald Acuna MVP buyback. So I still have $42 left. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and trade this Michael Harris and the $42 for something um, even bigger, like in the $125 range maybe. So wish me luck and um, yeah, we'll see how he goes. This, this could be really good. All right, guys back for another update and it's a good one so i uh found a table of these guys that were buying and trading and um, they honestly gave me a great deal on a trade so to recap i had that michael harris um refractor auto i had um a bryce terang auto to 99 and i had a spencer steer gold to 75 rookie and um the steer came in the 15 dollar lot the Bryce Terang, okay, I had like a $25 sticker, but I got it in the $95 lot. And uh, the Michael Harris, I paid $40 plus a buyback card for. And um, I took those cards and I traded them for this monster. They, These guys, even though um, it wasn't graded and I told them about the scratches, they valued that Michael Harris at $140. So I threw in the Spencer Steer and the Bryce Terang and um, they wanted, I don't I don't know how much this card's worth. The only ones on eBay are in the $304 range. This card's probably not worth that. The, I can't find any comps, but it's a Bobby Witt 2020 Bowman Chrome First Atomic Refractor PSA 10. So I still have $42 left and I have this card now too. So there's about an hour, two hours left on the show. I'm gonna go back in and see if we can't make some more deals. Um, I've been having a ton of fun doing this, honestly. So $42 left to spend. I got to figure out what to do with it. I might include this card in it. And um, yeah, well, all right. I will check back in shortly. All right. I had to do a little time warp with the video. So uh, the last time I checked in, I was in my truck and I was kind of reviewing what I what I had. And um, I made a plan to go back into the card show and, you know, for the last couple hours and see what I could do there with the $42 I had left over. 
and with that super awesome Bobby Witt Jr. Bowman first atomic refractor. I did go back into the card show, um, but I, I was really tired. I was exhausted. My feet were hurting. I've been walking around so much. Um, and I, I went to a couple tables, um, kind of got some interest peaked in the Bobby Witt. One guy actually offered me, um, let's put it up here so you can see it. One guy actually offered me 165 cash for this. Um, I should have taken it, honestly, in hindsight. Uh, the reason I didn't was because the only ones on eBay were listed at 369. So I thought, well, even if I list, list mine at 350 and allow offers, like I can probably get 200 for it. So um, eh, I don't really know if that's the case since there are sold comps for um, in, in the 170 range. I probably should have just taken the 165 on this and then walked out with all the free cards for the day, essentially. Um, anyways, hindsight's 2020. But um, anyways, yeah, I'm home now. I didn't actually make any more deals that day. I had a super good time at the show. It was a much better experience than my first two shows I went to. So I'm really excited to go back to more. And um, I'll be keeping my uh, ear to the ground and figuring out when they are. But anyways, all of the trades and stuff, up the updates that you saw from the truck and from the show, that's it. Um, I have nothing else. I didn't pick up anything else. I didn't trade or sell anything else. So let's go ahead and look at what I grabbed and um, compare it to the goal I set for the day. So... My goal initially was to pick up about 15 $1 or bargain box cards, and I exceeded that goal. Um, so let's go through everything real quick. I pick up this Tristan Casas Spotlight. That was This isn't part of the first lot. Tristan Casas uh, Rookie of the Year favorites. These cards um, these cards are not worth much. I thought they were worth a little bit more. But um, anyways, I, I like Tristan Casas, so I'll probably just hang on to these because I don't have these um, rookie cards. And then I picked up um, a Bowman, some Bowman Sapphires in the same lot. Michael Harris here, uh, Rookie. Nolan Gorman rookie, a couple Riley Green rookies, and a Gabriel Moreno rookie. These are worth like anywhere between a dollar and two dollars. Um, some sold comps in, in like three maybe, but um, overall, like I didn't, I didn't really buy those to like make money or anything like that. I just like those rookies. Those are guys that I'm watching. Um, so I'm probably gonna hang on to those for a while. But and they just they're they're cool looking cards. Sapphire is cool. Too expensive for me to rip probably, but um, yeah, it was it was nice to pick them up in that fifteen dollar lot. That's the same lot that I had the Hakuni Jr. buyback and the Spencer Steer. Um, it was actually a yellow refractor, not a gold. Um, it looks gold, but it's actually yellow. Um, but And the comps actually ended up coming in a little bit lower on that because I did look for the gold. So uh, I'll, I'll get into that uh, in, a, in a little bit. But these three Tyrese Halliburton cards came in a lot um, as well. These cards are not worth $2. I thought being rookie cards even though they are draft picks they would be slightly more valuable they you know they're the red cracked ice but they're not um it's fine though you know didn't do great on those cards but hey as a pseudo pacers fan um i thought it would be a good pickup so i've been watching him lately uh picked up a some cards out of a, a quarter box here luca garza um again i picked this up because he was a menace in the big 10 um not not because you know, he's doing great in the NBA right now or anything like that. Obviously, he, he's 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 nobody in the NBA right now, but hopefully one day he will be. But I just picked this up because it was a, kind of like a nostalgia thing, just remembering him being so good in college. Um, Lonzo Ball, rookie. Um, I was that, This card was just a filler, honestly. I don't have any special attachment to Lonzo Ball or anything like that. I just, I, I needed two more quarter cards because the cards that I really wanted were the Carson Edwards uh, because he was a Purdue player. So, um, and then the other two are really just kind of filler. But I picked up these two Carson Edwards um, Panini Prism basketball cards, uh, pink cracked dice, and the red, white, and blue uh, Prism. So, um, again, nothing super valuable there. Those are kind of just, you know, G whiz, hang on to cards just, you know, for my own nostalgia's sake. Um, and I mostly just wanted to see what kind of stuff was in a quarter box because um, obviously I was, you know, not too familiar with a quarter box. So I kind of know what's in a dollar box, but I was like, well, how bad can a quarter box be? And really, what it is, is it's people who didn't make it in the league and who got cards. Um, that's essentially what quarter boxes are, apparently. This next set of cards is um, all basketball from a dollar bin. A LeBron James card here. Um, DeMontis Sabonis rookie. I did I, I did very poorly on this box. I thought I picked out some cards that would be worth a couple bucks, you know, two, three, four dollars maybe. I did not. Um, and honestly, I, I shouldn't have even picked up these cards because they're probably going to be hard to sell too. There are tons on eBay. Well, that's not true. There's a couple where I couldn't find comps because they're older. I thought I had, you know, some some winners in here, but I it turns out I really just didn't. Um, all of these cards comped between one and two dollars, so uh, I paid seven dollars for the ten cards, so seventy cents a card. But you know, if I sell them on eBay, like I'm probably coming out behind. So 
Um, did not did not do great. But anyways, we got a LeBron James, uh, Sabon, uh, Demontis Sabonis rookie, a Obi Toppin. I thought for sure this Obi Toppin, um, what is this? I can't remember. Illusions. Yeah, Panini Illusions rookie. I thought this would be worth more than a, a buck, but it's it's really not. Basketball card prices have me a little bit perplexed, honestly. I, I don't know. The basketball prices are just hard for me to to get a grasp on. This Michael Jordan card, it's like uh, 1992, 93. It's actually like the most valuable card. I think the last one sold for like 250. So um, this was in the dollar box. So it's 70, 70 cents for a 250 card, whatever. That's fine. It's a Michael Jordan. I probably won't sell it anyways. And um, then I picked up some, uh, another Pascal um, Siakam, just, you know, getting him picked up in the Pacers trade. I had a really hard time figuring out what this prism was. I kept typing in tricolor, but it turns out there's actually a uh, a blue purple uh, prism. I had to actually go look at a checklist from Beckett to figure out what it was. Panini with the with the weird parallels and prisms. It was a decent decent looking card, but yeah, you know it's it's, it's a dollar card. Um, and I also thought this card would be worth a couple bucks. I was like, man, this is a really cool looking card. Uh, this OG Ananobi uh, rookie card. This is like Panini 2017 18 status. I just picked out cards that I thought looked cool and was kind of hoping that they were good. You know, if they if they aren't worth a lot, then so what? They look cool and then I have them. So um, anyways, you know, none of these were real big winners. And again, a, another really cool looking card. This is a Living Legends Tony Parker for the Spurs and it's like, you know, see-through. You know, you can see my thumb back there. A super cool looking card. Not valuable, but, you know, took a shot at it and then um, it's really no big deal. And then uh, uh, another Pascal Siakam. Uh, again, this is a, a really cool looking card. I think this is another Panini status. Yeah, 2019, 2020 Panini status. I've never even heard of that product before, but this is a this is a pretty good looking card. Trey Young here. I saw a bunch of these Express Lane cards in, in tower boxes, so I knew that they weren't worth a ton, but I thought it looked cool. This one's a hollow, so I've, I don't own um, any decent Trey Young cards, so I thought this one looked cool. It's kind of like, um, you know, like he's got the yellow and the red and laying a jersey, and I, I kind of felt like it was a little bit of a team color match, so... And then this Drew Holiday, um, this is an older card, 2013-2014 uh, Spectra Blue. And this is, I don't know if you can see it or not, this is numbered to 75 or 65. I'm looking through my camera right now, my phone. 65. This one I thought I might actually do well on. Um, I thought this could be like four or five bucks. I couldn't find any recent sales of this, but it's because it's from 2013, 2014. All the basketball cards from the quarter box and from the dollar box. I mean, those are those are true like dollar bargain cards. Like I didn't I didn't really have any winners in this lot. The baseball cards, these these are the sapphires at least. Like these could be a couple bucks um, depending on the player. I actually think the Gabriel Moreno most recently sold for like three fifty. But these, Tristan Costas, these are definitely just like a dollar card. Last sold for like 99 cents. So I, I definitely achieved the goal of buying um, 15 uh, bargain cards. Um, what I did not achieve a goal for was buying small cards. These are the only two that I really grabbed. This Will Benson, I had a $6 price tag. I got everything like 15% off the price tag. And honestly, the, the price tags that this guy had on him were, were pretty decent compared to comps. Um, slightly over, obviously I, I assume he had some, uh, wiggle room on him, but, uh, we ended up about 15% off the price tag. And I think honestly that put everything at last sold comps. Um, I just looked at a few cards when we were working out the deal. This card actually paid a little bit over on, you know, if you take 15% off the $6 mark, um, this card's actually like a three or $4 card. I paid a little bit more for this one, but then I paid less for the other one. So it was, it worked out. Um, pick this, uh, Morel up. These are both like four to $6 cards. So these are really the only small cards I had that would be worth separating from the dollar bin. So I did not do a great job of finding those cards or identifying them. I, I, I need to work on that. So the next cards that I was looking for were the medium sized cards, not sized, medium priced cards. Ozzy Smith here. This is like a $34 card and, um, I paid $34 for it. Essentially, this was part of a $95 lot. And I think he, I think he said he wanted 36 for this. I can't remember. So I, I, I paid where the comps are, but this is my first Ozzy Smith uh, autograph. Hall of Fame autographs on modern cards decades after they played are kind of weird. Obviously you'd prefer to have like a signed Ozzy Smith rookie, you know, for 34 bucks to get a Hall of Fame autograph number to 99, that's pretty decent. So I'll hang on to this one until I'm ready to upgrade to like an Ozzy Smith rookie autograph. Um, and also just wanted to say, I love his autograph. <laughs> you can actually read it. You can actually read the words. You can tell that that says, I mean, it does kind of look like it says Ozzy Smiths maybe, but it's like, come on, some of these other guys, 
Those aren't even words, but this one is an actual true name that you can read, so I love it. Got this for like 34 bucks, so this was in my um, my medium-sized cards. And then I also picked up another Hall of Fame autograph, um, the great Brooks Robinson. This one's on card, actually, which is what caught my eye about it. Obviously, Brooks Robinson recently passed away, so any on-card auto, um, you know, is, is a good find, honestly. Again, a Hall of Famer on a modern card. I think this was 21 tops black or tops chrome black. Well, I would love to have a signed Brooks Robinson card from um, that came out in the era that he played. But until I'm ready to upgrade to one of those, this will do just fine. I think I think the guy had like a forty dollar verbal price tag on this card, so I got a fifteen percent off. Um, I think I ended up paying like thirty six or something out of that lot of ninety five dollars, and then. This card actually came in that same $95 lot, and he had a $5 price tag on it. We're down in Houston. I thought for sure this card, you know, would be more popular. And I walked by his case twice, and I came back, and it was still in there. And um, I, I don't want to say I feel bad, but this guy mis mispriced this card. He has the $5 sticker on it. I haven't changed any of the stickers on any of these cards, by the way. The way you see them is the way they came. So he knew that this was numbered to 59, 35 of 59 is the serial number, and he put a $5 sticker tag on it. So in this product, um, which one is this? Hoops, yeah, 23, 24, Panini, Hoops. This, this, is a, this is a blue explosion, but a more common parallel is a teal explosion. Now, I think the $5 price for the teal explosion is a good comp. However, this is a blue explosion, and it is numbered to 59. Oh, we got it backwards here. The blue explosion most recently sold in like the seventy dollar range, and there is, um, there there are some listed right now for over a hundred dollars. So I did very well on this card, picking it up for five dollars. Again, I think he just mispriced it, thinking it was a teal explosion, um, when it is in fact a blue explosion. So this was a great find. I'm actually probably going to hang on to this card because Cam Wentworth's really coming out of his shell, and like he's been doing really well lately. Um, unfortunately, I don't think the Rockets are going to pull through this year and, and do well in the playoffs. So I don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs at this point. But um, I think Cam Whitmer is going to do just fine. Everybody expected him to be like in the top 10 or 15 draft picks, and he slid all the way into the 20s. I can't remember if he was number 20 or 22. Um, but a lot of teams passed on him. And, you know, his, his draft pick filled at the 20s. And honestly, I think some people are kicking themselves now because this guy is playing great. So this was an awesome find. Realistically, I paid like... $4.50 for this card, and this could be a $100 card. So that was a great pickup in the medium-sized lot. I did achieve my goal for finding three medium-sized cards. And my last goal of the day was to pick up one big card, and I had no intention of going in there and walking out with a Bobby Witt Bowman um, first. But that's what I got, and it was a great pickup. Obviously, um, I kind of already talked about how I got to this card with the trades. Most recent sold on this. There hasn't been a lot recently sold was 172 but the mo the lowest one listed right now is 369. So this was obviously a super good pickup. This population is a 111. There are 111 2020 Bowman Chrome Bobby Witt Jr's Prospects Atomic Refractors PSA 10s. Um, obviously none higher since it's a 10. So um I, I think I'll probably just sell this card once the baseball season kicks off. Uh, Bobby Witt had a great year despite the Royals being awful and as soon as he gets hot I think that card's going to sell. So I think I could get over $200 for this, which means everything else I got today was absolutely free. Two Hall of Fame uh, autographs, a Cam uh, Whitmore rookie, and a bunch of other, you know, lower stuff. So just a good pickup, a, a really good experience overall. And oh, oh not to mention, and I, you know, I still had $42 left over. So I, <laughs> I paid $158 for all of this stuff. And honestly, I think if it were to sell at market price, um, I think it would be like $350. So did super well at this card show. There's stuff that I'm keeping. There's stuff that it will be on eBay. Um, I just had a really good time. So, but yeah, anyways, thanks for watching this, this special episode uh, today on the YouTube channel. Um, if you guys enjoyed this kind of content, please let me know in the comments. I will find some more card shows to go to if you do. If you don't, let me know too, and then I'll stick to my regular stuff. But um, I would appreciate you hitting the like and subscribe button. Those are absolutely free things to do. It only takes a second. And um, I really appreciate you being here. The channel's been growing. I've been having a lot of fun making these videos. And I'm looking forward to make more. So 
Uh, I have $42 left to spend for the rest of the month on singles. I'll try and find some stuff on eBay or maybe even go to another show. But um, yeah, we've got some more rips coming this uh, month. And I still have my PSA preview to give you guys too. So I will catch you guys on the next one.